Good morning, everybody. I must say at the outset that uh, I share the satisfactory optimism of Chief Justice Lalit, but I also associate myself with the anguish that my good friend Sonli has expressed. And I must tell you why. You know, it's very interesting. Prime Minister Netanyahu of Israel today, with an extremely right-wing you know, coalition government, is wanting to pass in his parliament a law to say that the parliament will have the last word and parliament will have a right to override any judgment of the Supreme Court and that the government alone should have power to select the judges. Across Israel, millions and millions of people are standing up against it. Industry, the tech industry in Israel is very, very powerful and very well entrenched. The entire tech industry is up in arms. Some of the best tech companies have threatened that we will leave Israel and go to other countries. Civil society members, judges, lawyers, politicians, workers, everybody is up in arms. In Jerusalem, almost more than 150,000 people you know, joined in demonstration about 10 days ago. Then 10 cities of Israel have seen very large-scale demonstrations. And to cap it all, the President of Israel told his cabinet and the Prime Minister that you are heading for a constitutional and a social disaster. Now that's the kind of a nation that we have. I still remember and I you know, stand in awe. Sondi is right about, you know, the yeah, inertia on the part of the bar and I must take a responsibility because I have been a leader of the bar. We are not really interested in independence of judiciary. We don't care a damn what happens so long as, you know, we are able to get the briefs and just go about our business. Pakistan, under the dictatorship of Musharraf, when Musharraf removed Chief Justice Siftikar Chaudhary, the entire bar and the judiciary across Pakistan stood up, fought and forced the dictator to bring back the chief justice. Now it is well nigh impossible in this country that anything of this kind can happen. Judicial, executive interference in judiciary, large scale today, large scale. I mean with greatest respect to Chief Justice Lalit, Justices Lokur, Justice Gupta, whom I regard as some of the finest judges that I have seen in my uh, career of 44 years. But they are exceptions. They are a dying species. We have large number of judges who are highly questionable. They either lack the expertise, the knowledge, most of all the commitment. And you see today what's happening in the country that every activist is unable to get bail even in simplest of the cases. Even stand-up comedians are unable to get the bail when he's produced before a judge for making some, you know, funny comment about the Prime Minister or somebody else. So, you know, the look at the kind of situation which we are facing today uh, of the people who are charged with offences in Delhi riot cases. Across the country, it's my experience now, which I have been observing very carefully, that opposition leaders are being arrested you know, sometimes on flimsy grounds, sometimes on purely bailable offences, but are not getting bail from our uh, lower courts and high courts, and many a times from the Supreme Court. This is really very, very alarming. And this shows that there is large-scale interference by the government in the appointment. Yes, there is a collegium system. Yes, the collegiums comprise and do deliberate very seriously. But I must say, I started in 1978 in Gujarat and there were 14 judges in Gujarat High Court there. And I can dare say, each one was better than the other in terms of competence, in terms of intellectual level, in terms of integrity, in terms of courtesy, in terms of hard-working nature. I mean, all 14 of them were par excellence. I have seen a judge like Chief Justice P.D. Desai, who was Chief Justice of Himachal, from Gujarat originally, Himachal Chief Justice, Calcutta Chief Justice, Bombay Chief Justice and refused to come to Supreme Court because his junior was brought to Supreme Court. I mean, these are the kind of judges I have seen who were exceptional. Today, it, as it happened during Mrs. Indira Gandhi's time, that judiciary is becoming weak and weak. 
the collegium system is in place the judgments of the supreme court are law of the land and yet there are judges like akil qureshi justice jain patel justice murlidhar and many such examples including sondis who are suffering beyond repair and who is the loser the nation the public interest the supreme court has power to ensure that our laws are implemented power of contempt but not once the supreme court has exercised the power of contempt since 1993 it shows that supreme court is afraid of taking the executive head on and unless supreme court takes the executive head on this interference will continue to my mind chief justice murli dar place is only in the supreme court he is one of the most outstanding judges in every sense of how a judge should be he is a classic example of you know a good judge but poor fellow is not even able to get a good high court he was he is in orissa collegium recommended him to be transferred to uh, chennai madras the government is not implementing and collegium is sitting twiddling its thumb now i i am I'm, i have a very serious reservation about what is happening there are exceptional judges in collegium but if you look at the judgment of 1993 the judges appointment case i always you know wonder there is only one thing which strikes me in that judgment the judge said we must pick the best from those amongst available have they done that in my respectful view not at all i have seen some of my colleagues at the bar in supreme court being appointed in last 10 15 years especially in last last 7 8 years who should not have ever been considered for judgeship across the board and it's really i mean i'm not taking any particular name but the kind of performance that they have today the kind of judgments that they pass the kind of comments that they make in the court makes us really feel one you know how how is it that the collegium system is failing in not considering this chief justice lalit may be right in saying that in some case they uh, seen you know judgments of a particular type being considered but i can dare say that a recently appointed judge to the supreme court has not written a single good judgment in his career as a judge now what do you do about it who nobody wants to speak the bar is silent absolutely and the collegium just goes about its work as if you know everything is honky dory so my own feeling is that this is not how really we should there is no doubt that today like this is gandhi prime minister modi is an extremely powerful uh, you know leader and naturally every powerful leader would want to perpetuate his power and he doesn't want judiciary asking him questions about how his policies are how his government's actions are he doesn't want that naturally but the judiciary's role as chief justice lalit said and as uh, sodi very beautifully put it judiciary's role is to question them and unless we have a judiciary which is willing to question them day in and day out you know uh, it's really now look at you know the kind of comments that law minister the vice president the lok sabha speaker have all been making about the collegium there is complete silence on the part of the political class why is it that the political opposition parties are not raising that as a very serious issue while they are wasting their time on la affair adani of course they should raise about adani but that's a secondary issue the far more serious issue is the attack that the executive is launching every day on the judiciary so i have uh, i mean i feel sorry to say that this country has gone into some kind of inertia some kind of a coma where we are not interested in a strong and independent judiciary we do talk look at the kind of i mean effort that has been made in organizing uh, this uh, beautiful seminar and some of the finest minds of this country are here but the kind of response that we receive that shows that nobody in this country even in the bar anybody cares the supreme court bar association has failed to pass any resolution so condemning what the law minister has been saying which is highly improper highly improper and for law minister to speak about uh, matters being filed in supreme court and caution the supreme court not to take up it's clearly obstruction of justice to my mind a west bengal chief minister was found guilty of contempt when he did so many years ago so it's this is a situation which i don't know how yes i agree with chief justice lalit that collegium system is perhaps the only uh, solution today although i was against it when i argued uh, in jsc case as president of the supreme court bar 
I did attack the collegium system. Uh, Justice Lokur was on that bench and I was uh, very frank about it because I have seen what is happening. There are many things which we can't discuss. But let us not judge judiciary and its position or its strength or weaknesses by looking at some finest examples which are far and few. We can't just say that because Justice Lalit is so good or Justice Lokur is so good or Justice Gupta is so good, judiciary is in good condition. No. Go down to the high courts. Complete inertia. The kind of, you know, kind of and kind of approach that judges have, the kind of treatment judges give to the bar, the kind of, I mean, lack of integrity, lack of commitment, lack of, lack of intellectualism, all that is, you know, very, very present in large number across the country. There are outstanding judges, but they are far and few. And they are the only ones as a result of which people still have faith in this system, in judiciary. Judiciary after the armed forces, according to me, is the most loved institution in this country. But is judiciary standing up? So, you know, it's, I think, se tali nahi batti hai, do se batti hai. If government is interfering, there is every responsibility and duty on the part of the judiciary to strike back at the government. Does the judiciary have that will to strike back? In my view, no. Unless judiciary strikes back in few cases, you know, all these cases, if we start issuing contempt notice and, you know, uh, call upon the Secretary Justice to the Government of India to appear before it, things will start moving. But that's not happening. And it won't happen because, yeah, because there is really no will to really take the government head on. So, this interference is causing a very serious, I, I would say, effect on rule of law in this country. Rule of law is seriously getting, you know, affected. Look at the challenges that minority community is facing today. We have over 160 million uh, members from the Muslim community. The kind of treatment which is being faced by them, you have seen yesterday two boys in from Rajasthan that picked up by some Bajrangal activists allegedly in Haryana and burnt alive in their vehicle. Now all kinds of instances are happening against the minority communities. The alleged, you know, in the name of alleged forced conversions, large number of Christians and, you know, Muslims are being arrested across the country. Judges are unable to stop it. Judges are unable to stop it. They don't get bail for months and years on. So, on the first day when he is produced, I, I give a classic example of this young boy, Shah Rukh Khan's son, who was picked up. The FIR, I have seen the FIR, actually says that he was not having any drug on him at all. And yet, when he is produced before the magistrate, magistrate sends him to demand. What can, and the High Court justified it initially. So what can, the poor boy ended up spending almost one and a half month in jail or two months in jail. Now you are destroying that young man for all times to come. Now nobody is taking action against that magistrate. The judy has judiciary has a duty to suspend that magistrate straight away. But it's not being done. So, these, there are millions of examples which we see in newspapers today, which we come across today across the country. And unless we become strong as, a, as citizens, you know, unless we, I mean, it's not enough to say that we love judiciary. We must be willing to stand up for our judiciary. We must respect our judges who are so outstanding and courageous and independent. At the same time, we must discuss also about judges who are failing us in more than one way. Now, if, unless we do that, I think this interference by the executive will always continue because, you know, the executive always has this arrogance that we are perhaps elected by the people and therefore we have a greater right to, you know, run the affairs of this country. They have never read the constitution. They have ne never read the constituent assembly debates. Member after member in the constituent assembly debates and those were outstanding men and women that India has ever seen. They spoke about independence of judiciary. They told the executive that, stop, you are not the final word. The executive is going to be the final word. And they beautifully discussed the role of judiciary vis-a-vis -vis the executive and the parliament. All that is now singularly forgotten. I don't think any, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, many people really read about these constituent assembly debates. Many people understand what the constitution's nuances are. Look at it, I mean, we are saying government after government, elected governments, are being brought down by winning away, and we all know what is the method of winning away, 10, 20, 30 MLAs from that popular government. And what does the Supreme Court do? 
the four tests. Now there is nothing worse than this hypocrisy. You know that floor test is going to fail because they have already paid, hijacked those members to Assam in a chartered plane, made them sit in seven star hotels and they are going to come and vote for the party uh, whom they have de defected from. So what is the value of this floor test? Why can't the Supreme Court be innovative and say that no, in such a situation we can recommend that those who have gone away like this should not be allowed to vote. They must first get themselves re-elected then the voting must take place till such time the existing government will continue. Then only we can stop this kind of political immorality. Otherwise, it's become a laugh, laughing affair that seven, eight governments have been pulled down by Bhartiya Janta Party in various states with this kind of methods. And Congress also did it when Congress was in power. Governors, you know, uh, uh, governor is in, uh, in, uh, imposed on the state governments by dismissing state governments. Congress did it thanks to judiciary then remaining silent. It's happening today. So I feel that there are many ways ultimately, you know, the judiciary uh, must uh, stand up. Judiciary can't say that there is an executive interference and therefore we are unable to do it. That will has to come from within. And Bar is a, I would say, has a great role to play. Sadly, Bar doesn't have many Prashant Bhushans unfortunately and that's the reason why bar is unable to stand up you know and support the judiciary or create a public awareness across the country what you need is a movement a movement where you know people across the country would understand why judiciary is so important because if you see your neighbor being arrested without any justification and yet you are not able to do anything it's and just remain you know silent about it it's the worst thing to do it's the worst thing to do and that's what is happening. Someday then it will come to you. But we are, we are just going along. So my, my own request to all of us here and particularly to you know, the distinguished panelists who are here is that we really need to have a different approach to this challenge. It is a very, very serious challenge. To my mind, we have lost the plot. I am a pessimist and I don't think that we can really overcome this situation especially with the kind of appointments that have been made in the last seven, eight years across the high courts. And uh, the kind of ideological ideology that has set in to judges in high courts is extremely dangerous, extremely dangerous. We need only one ideology in our judiciary, Constitution of India, nothing else. And that, in my respectful view, is uh, singularly absent amongst the judiciary. So unless judiciary buckles up, unless judiciary, uh, you know, really tells the government that we are the final word, we are the final arbiter of the constitution, you have no role to play. And you have certainly no role to play in appointment of judges because you will make appointments of judges like you are appointing governors today. I mean, look at the behavior of governor after governor. Uh, look at any institution, look at election commission, look at CAG, look at any institution where government is making appointments, constitutional institutions. The worst appointments are being made today. Now, if government were to be left to appoint them, then naturally they will also fill up judiciary with not even those few people who are coming, good people, will get appointed. So I, I feel that I would request judiciary uh, that it must rise to the occasion and uh, perhaps tell government ultimately that we are the final arbiter. Thank you so much. To receive instant updates on all videos from The Wire, click the subscribe button and hit the bell icon. Pay to support independent journalism. Click the link in the description and choose the amount you want to pay.